Welcome to IDF TV. My name is Frank Impius and I'm from the Oracle JDevap and ADF product management team. In this session, we talk about exposing ADFism components models as a service. Where would you use that? Well, I don't know if you watched all of ADF TV, but one of the sessions is about patterns, architectural patterns, and Chris Muir talks about a multi-channel access pattern which is where different devices like a browser or a mobile device needs to access to the same business logic and validation. One of the options to achieve this would be to expose the model as a service. In ADF Business Components, we can expose the model as an SDO service for SOAP access or as RESTful service, and both is covered in this session. So let's have a look first at SDO services. Now, if you look at SDO services, then there are three potential clients that we want to serve. One is the normal Java web service client. Well, that includes JAXWS um, proxy clients and the web service data control, for instance. Then we do have the service, uh, the service component architecture, like the SOA suite, where you want to integrate with ADF business components. And we can create ADF business components entity from a service. I don't know if you ever tried, but if you look into a manual creation of the entity, then one of the options is a service. And the service interface that we mean is ADF Business Components and not a vanilla web service. The functionality that you can expose on the service are view objects, view criteria, custom methods and operations. And you do so on the application module and you do it declaratively. In the end, what we will get is an annotated EGB session base. Now, how does that look in an architecture view? On the architecture image that you see here, on the left-hand side, you see that still best practices apply. And we recommend that you create your own base framework classes from the ADF Business Components framework classes. Even if you don't have to put anything into that, just to have this as an empty shell is beneficial in the future if you want, for instance, add consistent logging throughout your entities or throughout your view objects. Based on the framework classes that you create, you then create entities that read from a table, view objects and expose the view objects on an application module. This is the same as if you would build a web-based application. On the application module then, if you open up the editor, you see a service interface option from where you can select which of the view objects and which of the functionality I just named you want to expose as a web service. This then will be exposed as an enterprise Java Bean session facade and can be accessed from the three clients. So this is how you would do this to expose it as an SDO object. Now let's look into exposing ADF business component as a RESTful model. Well, RESTful services, and here we really look into the future are not yet available in the current release of JDeveloper and ADF. Depending on when you watch this video, it might be available, but to the time of recording, it's not. So we're kind of speaking about a future development. Similar to the SDO service in ADF Business Components, we provide the same functionality. We allow you to expose view objects, view criteria, and so on as a RESTful service. Though RESTful services work slightly different than SEO services in that RESTful services expose a resource, in which case we would expose the uh, view object as a resource on the client interface. Typical use cases are the same as for SEO services. You can access RESTful services from an HTML page, from enterprise applications, or from Jersey classes, if you want. If we look at the architecture, then there's a slightly difference in the architecture compared to SDO services. As you see, there is no EGB session facade as a service interface. There's a servlet. And this is the way that RESTful services work. The difference in the handling is that RESTful services with ADF business components produce a JSON payload, which is a JavaScript object notation, in contrast to XML, which is what we produce with SDO. There are different use cases for both, for using SDO services with a SOAP interface or for using RESTful services, though RESTful services have become very popular recently. Both can be covered with ADF Business Components, showing you the ability that ADF has to allow you to architect 
for different devices, multi-channel access, but still leveraging the same business logic and the same validation. As a disclaimer, keep in mind, currently, and we're talking about the first release of 12C, which is the current release by the time of recording, we don't have RESTful services for ADF business components, but that's on the radar and that will come in one of the next releases. So let's talk about best practices. When you expose ADF business components on the service interface, then of course, there must be some adoption for you to do and to consider. First of all, think service. The same rules as in service-oriented architecture apply to services that you expose through ADF business components. So create the services that are not too fine-grained. So they should cover some sort of um, business requirement or business unit. When you develop services, make sure that ADF business components is created with Java Extended for Oracle, which is a new data type we introduced in 11G release 2 and still have in 12C. While the domain data types are still supported, we recommend that any kind of service exposure you plan are based on Java Extended for Oracle. And then think deployment. Don't package the service interface into the same application deployment as your web application. Again, think service because you want to deploy a service. You don't want to deploy a full grown human resource management application only for a simple service API. And then think network. The data that you have available and that you want to display on the browser might be different from the data that is required on a mobile device. Also think that the mobile device network may not be as strong as the network that you have available when connected by a browser. So make sure that you expose only the data you need and that you go for a strategy that loads child data deferred, which means that you're not immediately sending parent and child data with one query because that would be kind of an unnecessary data deployment to the client device. So as this is an architecture training, we're not really going into implementation details. However, we want to talk about project structures in Oracle JDeveloper. And here the recommendation is to think deployable unit. Now what's a deployable unit? A deployable unit is something that you deploy to a server for use. So if you have an application and you followed the practices that we explained in the architecture session and you decide say for pillar architecture then you have modules that you define for your application so that in the end when you run the application your application consists out of several java e applications now if you want to expose one of the functionality there on the service interface the recommendation is to create a new project just for the service exposure and this project can then belong to the workspace that you defined the pillar in, yeah? so the Java E application. But still, because you have it in a separate project, it allows you to deploy the service only. The recommendation also is because you want to avoid dependencies. If I create a web-based application, then having a lot of view links between the view objects makes a lot of sense because I have immediate data synchronization. Mobile devices work differently and you want to avoid circular references due to the technology that we use, which is EGB. Circular references could really quickly get to a point where the application just doesn't deploy. deploy. So what you want to make sure is that you have minimum set of view links in your service interface. So not to impact the web-based application, you put the project for the service that you want to expose into its own project. If reuse is possible, then you should reuse, of course, your entity and view object. However, you do so using ADF libraries. So instead of creating a dependency between the web model project to your service project, you would expose the web model project as ADF libraries and then create a new ADF business components model from these libraries. So you would reuse entity validation, business logic, view logic if you use the view objects, but you wouldn't create a dependency. The same for the base classes, of course. So here's an architecture diagram of how we envision a good architecture would look like that really separates concerns and for that reason makes it easy to expose ADF business components on the service interface. 
you see three projects here. One is the SDO model, the REST model, and the web model. So you create the web model project, and all of these can be built out of IDF library. So if you have a common workspace that has the model project defined and expose this or export this as an IDF library, then of course all of these projects could leverage the libraries and build the model. Typical, however, customers start with building a web application, so they do have a web model. So here you would deploy the web model to an IDF library and then you create your SDO service project and your REST service project and you would just use the ADF library to create entities from it or to reference the entity. This way you have a clear separation between the different concerns and keep in mind I don't think that you will ever deploy an SDO service with a REST service with a web module. Yeah? So that's kind of an overkill. So keep the things separate because then they are easier to manage and easier to maintain. The ADF library in this picture here contains enterprise um, objects or entity objects that point to a table and then the deployment is to an ear file or to a wall file for the web application. So this is the architecture image that we recommend you to follow when you build service with IDF business components. And keep in mind RESTful services will not be available before one of the next patch sets of 12.2. So this concludes our service integration session for ADF CV. So we talked about service integration where ADF becomes the consumer of web services and RESTful services. And now this one ends the series by talking about exposing ADF business components as a service. Remember, if your business model is not ADF business component, still you can, can expose the model as a service because Enterprise Java Beans would provide you the same functionality, same for the Pojo model. If you expose it as a RESTful service, then currently you would use a Java E6 feature, which is a REST API, or you would use, if you're not on Java E6 yet, you would use your Jersey library, which allow you to expose models on the RESTful service interface.